here. Already? You wouldn't want Marcy to miss the train, would you? Yeah, I would. Wouldn't mind it a bit. Oh, now, Sam, please. Just listen to that meter ticking. Shut off your meter. She'll be right down. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Oh, hello, John. You're losing Marcy today, huh? She's not dying, you know. She's just going to Chicago. Oh, Sam, stop shouting. <laughs> That's the year she wanted to be an actress. Pretty good, too. Oh, I remember this. Remember this summer she won it? Most popular girl at Camp Wadahami. Oh, Mother, you're an angel for helping me with all this. I'll finish. You just sit down and talk to me. No, I'll help. How I'm going to get all these clothes in here, I'll never know. Uh, does this go? Yeah. Did Rodney leave? Yes, uh, he wanted to come down the train, Dad, but I thought that was silly. It's a working day. He's a nice boy. I uh, think Now, Sam, uh, bring the things from the dresser, will you? We've all agreed that if this is what Marcy wants to do, she should do it. Well, I just thought maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea if she stayed and married him. Where do you want these? Here, I'll take them. Oh, he's sweet, Dad, but it's strictly a business arrangement. Oh, that's too bad, because I think... Go, that... go sit down here. I gave him an idea for his canning factory to can whole family dinners. They come in sets, everything from soup to dessert. Say, that's a wonderful idea. It's working out, too. Darling, doesn't your head ever get tired of these things? Mine does. Oh, before I forget, I ordered the stove, and if they don't bring it on Monday, you better call them, Mother. Will do. Let me see, I canceled my speech at the advertising club. Uh, oh, my robe. When the gardener puts in the dahlias, tell him not to put them so close to the fence. Well, that's your department. Uh -huh. Oh, and before I forget, we've got a credit of $3.50 for the meat market. If you go down there, Mother, ask for Marty. Marty? He must be new. Yeah, and I was thinking, Daddy, when you buy your new suit, ask him to show you some pinstripes. I think they'd look good on you. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. And guess where I put your pipe cleaners? Where? In your top desk drawer. Well, it'll be nice having them where they belong. Well, now you two take care of yourself while I'm away. Oh, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Guess that's it. No, nope. we better stop. The taxi's waiting. Well, what's the hurry? The taxi can wait. Oh, we're going to miss you, honey. Oh, I'm going to miss you, too. I might be back. Maybe they'll turn me down. No, they won't. But let me give you some advice. Don't give them a million suggestions your first day. You know, don't take over all at once. They've probably been getting along fine up until now. And when you go in for your interview, just say, no, sir, and yes, sir. Will you remember that? Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Marcy Lewis. Sit down, Miss Lewis. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. I thought you wrote a very impressive letter. So you're from Havenville, Indiana? Yes, sir. Do you like it there? Yes, sir. Where'd you go to school? Havenville. Oh. Uh, tell me about your parents. They're living. Tell me, uh, what made you decide to become an airline stewardess? I had a friend who was one. She... Yes? She likes it. You know, Miss Lewis, sometimes girls who are very well adapted to other things aren't quite suited to this kind of work. Oh, it's no reflection on the individual. 95% of our applicants are rejected. You mean I'm not accepted? I'm afraid not. You see, we're looking primarily for girls who like to meet people and take care of them. A stewardess is the greatest salesman an airline can have. We've got to be very but particular. But you're absolutely right, Mr. Williams. If you had a girl who was tongue-tied and couldn't take care of people, you'd have the passengers at each other's throats. And I love meeting people, and I love flying. You know, an airplane is more than just a piece of metal. It's, it's a home in the air. That might be a wonderful slogan for our company. Your home in the air. If you don't like that one, Mr. Williams, I've got a lot of other slogans. I've wanted to be an airline stewardess ever since I can remember. Aviation is the most exciting thing in the world. You know, God didn't mean people to be strangers. And with commercial aviation, people all over the world are becoming neighbors. Let me tell you about my uncle that used to fly in the last war. He was my mother's brother, but you won't believe this. When he started to fly, 
June, you go to dormitory DC3. That's the first room. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm Marcy Lewis. I'm Ann White, and this is Miss Wells. Hello, Miss White. Hello, Miss Wells. Hello. Hello. You're assigned to dormitory DC6. That's the second room down. Thank you. I think you'll find everything you need there. Thank you very much. Uh, Joyce Davis? My name's Jan Bates. I'm Marcy Lewis. You're welcome. Not oh, I'm exhausted. I wonder which one's mine. Take any bed. I feel like an old timer. I've been here ten years. Mind if I take the one next to yours? No, we're probably the oldest friends here. Hey, he's cute. Is he yours? Mm hmm. To Jan with my highest esteem. Roger's not very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found what I've forgotten yet. Oh. I think I belong here. My name is Kathy Hunter. Hello, Kathy, honey. This is Jan. That's Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Help yourself to a bed. Oh, thanks. I oh, can I sure can use one. I'm dead. May I have no. your attention, please? Will you get your things unpacked immediately and report to Miss White in 15 minutes? service involves safety, capability, efficiency, and courtesy. A stewardess must not only make a good first impression, but a lasting one. Now, your first duty is to go directly to the cockpit, where you'll clean the captain's earphones and radio mouthpiece with exuberol. Now, I'll show you how that's done. A little on the cotton. Very simple. Phew! <laughs> on a con bear, you'll work alone. On a DC-6, there are always two stewardesses. All right, Miss Wells. Oh, honey, there's nothing to this at all. Oh. I hope I didn't flunk that meteorology test. Marcy, what's that? Marcy! Mm. What's that rule about air masses? Oh, Alice. Since the general motion of the atmosphere in the United States is toward the east, the polar and arctic air masses generally, generally move toward the southeast. Is that it? <laughs> well, girls, I came here today to congratulate you. But after looking you over, I think I should congratulate our passengers. <laughs> There's a lot of hard work ahead of you and a lot of fun. I won't keep you from it any longer. In case you're mildly curious about your assignments, they're in the next room. Well, this time tomorrow we'll be on our own flight. I can't believe it. Flight 485, leaving for Dallas. Oh, that's me. Don't worry, Kathy. You're not going to an execution. I know, but I'm afraid I'm suddenly going to forget everything. Oh, no, you're not. You're not nervous. I'm not. Well, then why are my knees shaking? Oh, Jan. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Take care, Alice. Attention, please. American Airlines Flight 576 for Cleveland. Now, ready at That's me! All aboard, now, now, you're both going to be all right. You don't, uh, don't, don't let anybody know that you're nervous and don't let anybody know that you're scared. I guess I better get aboard. Goodbye, Jan. Goodbye, Alice. Now, take care now. Bye. Did I just watch your suitcase? Oh! That's right, honey. Don't be nervous. I'm not. Good night. Let Cleveland be nervous. Cleveland Tower calling American operations. American operations. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Point killer. 283 is on the ground, Joe. All right. As I was saying, it was the most beautiful two-wing job you ever saw. 
I had smooth air all the way and was all set for a two-point landing. What happened? Her mother walked in. Oh, all right. <laughs> Stuart, it's Marcy Lewis reporting for duty. Meteorologist Hawkins. Flight dispatcher Brown. Williams, charge of crew schedule. Allison, radio operator. At ease, men. You're not going to fly in this weather. But it's beautiful here. Ah, but you're not flying here. You're going to fly to Nashville. What's the weather in Nashville, Mr. Hawkins? I don't know, sir. I'll look in the paper. They're expecting a tornado, sir. Mm. But I love tornadoes. I've been out with the operations crew in Chicago. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hello, Hi. fellas. We'll check you in at a downtown hotel so you can find an apartment. Thank you. You'll go out in flight 783. 783. Report back here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock sharp. 11 o'clock. Synchronize your watches, men. <laughs> We're expecting big things of you. Roger. Over. Out. <laughs> 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 If you put the jack under the axle, I think you get a better leverage. Yes, but this is a bumper jack. Well, will you please hurry? I gotta be at the airport in ten minutes. I'm going as fast as I can. I don't think there's enough of a fulcrum. Look, lady, I've been jacking these cars all my life. Oh, I'm gonna be so late. Rob in the cradle of the sea. Yeah, can I give you a lift? Oh, wonderful. Here. Oh, thank you. Don't say you've got the wrong jack. I've never been late for a flight. No? Oh, I'm a stewardess. You see, a stewardess must not only create a good first impression, but a lasting one. Oh, really? Would you mind driving just a little bit faster? Oh, no. An airline service involves safety, capability, efficiency, and courtesy. Do you do much flying? Only you a like minute. it? Yeah, Me too. No other way to travel. You know, I'm not really happy unless I'm in the air, taking care of my passengers and crew. Gives you a feeling that you're, well, indispensable. You know, I never realized that a stewardess was so important. Planes don't fly without us. How about uh, pilot? Shelter. Well, I can't thank you enough. Well, I wouldn't have missed it for anything, Miss... Um... Oh, Lewis, Marcy Lewis. Marcy Lewis. M maybe we'll meet again sometime. I hope so, Miss Lewis. All right, thank you. Is that all right? Bye. Goodbye. Chauffeurs. Attention, please. American Airlines flight 183 from New York and Buffalo. Now arriving at gate five. Number one, sterilize captain's microphone. Thank you. 
Your clearance slip. Oh, thanks. Have a nice trip. Wait a minute. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, I I'll write to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. something to eat. Oh, thank you very much. I just ate. Oh, I forgot. Uh, take the baby, please. And uh, don't anybody go away. Oh, and everybody fasten your seatbelts. Hurry. Oh, 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 oh. Well, it's about time. Yes. This plane's flying on a schedule. When you get a clearance order, bring it to Yes, sir. I'm terribly... What are you doing here? I work here. But you didn't tell me you were... Well, you didn't give me a chance. Well, I'd like to explain about this morning. Well, maybe we could go someplace and chat over a cup of coffee. Oh, I'd love to, but we have to fly. Oh, that's what's been on my mind. Now I remember. The, the tower has been asking me to take off. Now then, if it won't inconvenience you, I'd like to leave. Hmm? All right. Was you a little rough on her? Well, that one needs a lesson. I think she's kind of cute. She's darling, fellas. Now, how about moving that ship? Magazine history. Magazine? May I have a well, pillow, please? Oh, yes. Wouldn't you like to take your hat off and be more comfortable? Thank you. Miss, so much. if it isn't too much trouble, I'd oh, like some this. lunch. <laughs> well, of course, I'm going to serve right away. Uh, here's something for you to read.
Past lunch. That's what I wanted to talk about. Well, you see, there was so much excitement and confusion, and then one of the passengers said he was hungry, and then I went to look. I forgot to check. Not the food. Yes. What? Yes, sir. Oh, of all the stewardesses in this country, I had to get to you. What oh, I'd like I'm to know sorry. is, what have I done to do? Hi, Charlie. A stewardess's job is to make a good impression. Now, of course, I'm only a chauffeur. But what I'd like you to know is what an impression you've made and how indispensable you've been. Let me go back for instructions. Right. Those passengers have to be fed. You know what Five, that means? Seven, eight, three. That oh, means we have to go back to the airport and spend 15 show. minutes long. Then land at 10 minutes long. So we then we'll get off a half an hour back. later, and then we can start all over again. It's an hour lost, and you're sorry. Maybe we won't have to. But you didn't write. I suppose things like this happen often. I've never seen this happen before. But don't judge by me. I've only been with the company for 15 years. Are they terribly upset? Well, you know how it is. Schedules and all that nonsense. Look, if this aeroplane ever reaches Nashville, Mr. Thomas, the operations chief there, is very anxious to see you. He is, huh? Well, goodbye again. How do they get dames like that? He's a menace to commercial aviation. Take it easy, Mike. Well, you're like a flying bus boy. Fellas, your lunches are packed. Would you like to make your airplane fly now? We have other planes to land. Sore? Sore? He wanted to land it by parachute. Thanks for everything, Marty. Goodbye. Goodbye, Good night, and don't you worry about a thing. We enjoyed the trip. Goodbye. Well, I don't know, Mike. This is a pretty serious thing. We can't just overlook it. Well, I'm not asking you to overlook it, Tommy. I just hope that you won't be too hard on it, that's all. Sure, she was excited. It was her first flight. She's great with passengers. Well, I'll see. Thanks, Tommy. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Do you know who I am? The whole airline knows who you are. Aviation stocks are tumbling. I said I was sorry. I tried to take care of all the passengers. I did everything I could to make them feel at home. Maybe I tried too hard, but anyway, I tried. Well, I don't mind. I can go back to Havenville. Furthermore, I'm going by bus. Goodbye. Miss Lewis, you'd better check your schedule. Your next flight goes out in an hour. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I promise you, you won't be sorry. Well, I hope not. You're oh. flying with Mike Jameson. Oh. Well, anyway, thank you. Don't forget the luncheon. 
No, sir. Captain Jameson. Oh. You'll be disappointed to know that I'm not being fired. Oh, well, you don't say. Mr. Thomas was very understanding. He felt it could have been worse. Yes. You could have forgotten your airplane. Chicago Midway Tower. Chicago Tower. Go ahead, American Flight 369. American Flight 369 in range of shoreline. Go ahead with landing instructions. You're number three to land on runway 22L, wind southwest five. Call on base leg. American Flight 369.
turn the oven off, Jan. Okay. Number three? Mm -hmm. Did you take a look at all the passengers on board? Mm -hmm. Why? Did anybody leave? No, but there's a man named Michael Lawrence I've got a feeling about. What kind of a feeling? I need two milks. <coughs> Nothing, except I think he's a VIP. The list didn't say anything about a very important person. Well, he isn't listed. It's just a feeling. Sort of an intuition. Yeah, sort of. Think it's too early to get the desserts out? Are you ready to serve? Mm-hmm. Now, Marcy, these intuitions of yours... Where is he? Up front. Oh, his head looks fine. I'll take his dinner and let you know. Thank you very much. Here's your dinner, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you enjoy your dinner, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, would you like some more hot coffee? Mm -hmm. What? No, thank you. This plane is going to be 48 hours late. Well, that's nice. Hello. I'm glad you're awake. Oh, well, so am I. What's your name? Natalie, what's yours? My name's oh, Mike. I'm terribly sorry that she disturbed Oh, you. that's all right. She got lonesome, I guess, and needed somebody to talk to. Don't you think you better go to sleep now? I'm not the least bit sleepy. Oh, why don't you let her sit there a minute? She's okay. Oh, are you sure right. she won't no, disturb you? No. Don't you think Mike is handsome? Well, I... Yes, I, I do. Thanks. Wouldn't you like me to tell you a story? I don't think so, thank you. Have you ever flown before? Oh, yes. I love to watch the stars. You do? Yeah, well, there's the Big Dipper out there. See it? And there's the Milky Way. Well, please. Now, let's go back to your seat, huh? Can I stay with Mike? Oh, well, that's a lot of stay here. There's plenty of room, really. There's Was no it trouble. all right? Sure, no well, bother I know. Right. Get her a pillow. Blanket. Tuck her in there. There we are. All right, Natalie, now go to sleep now. Just like you're at home. Yeah. The blanket tucked in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we are. Put your pants All right. Bye. Right. Sweet dreams. Got your hot chocolate? Oh, good. In for a minute, that's what I heard you bring a dog in here. I did. What? I brought a dog in. You read the rules lately? Yeah, I've read the rules. Cookie says we have to use our head. There was a little girl who couldn't sleep. Now she has her dog and everybody can sleep. What's the harm in that? Hollywood. I bet Kathy's rented us a bungalow. Hope it isn't too bad. Just a nice little place with a little backyard where we can lie up. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Either this is going to look better in the 
dark. Better get a key. Wait a minute. Room needs something, but I'm sure it isn't us. Where are the closets? Look, you've lived here as long as I have. It. Oh, here's the door. See where that leads. What is it? It's the bedroom. Well, let me see. Oh, no, no, stay right there. I'll bring it to you. <laughs> Did you sleep at all? Nope. I stayed up counting light bulbs. All I need to do is find a quiz show that wants to know how many times an hour Rick's sign goes on. The answer is 900. Oh, that's awful. I didn't mind that. What made me mad was that at 417 the sign went off and I didn't have a thing to do. I had the craziest dream. I dreamt all night long people were knocking at our door. You weren't dreaming. It seems that the former tenant of this dungeon was an exceedingly popular girl named Bubble. Her friends kept trying to drop in all night. Why didn't you wake me? They wanted bubbles. I'll get it. Bubbles doesn't live here anymore. Yes, I know. Are you Marcy Lewis? Yes. Telephone for you downstairs in the hall. If I'm not back in an hour, there is no phone in the hall. Marcy Lewis. Who? Oh, I see. Who is it? Miss Hale. Yes, Miss Hale. Oh, dear. Something wrong? If you'll wait a minute, I'll give you the full report. But not this time. But it was my fault. Jan had nothing to do with this. You see, I was... Yes, Miss Hale. Yes, I understand. All right, I'll come in this afternoon. Goodbye. You're in trouble, huh? How do you think? Well, let me see. Guess who's been grounded for a week? Oh, no. Yes. Poochie had to pick a woman who collects cats. She reported me. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. Well, you're not going to do anything. Say, you you are not. This is on me. That's why they came scared. Well, I'm not worried, Jan. What I did was right. It just turned out wrong. It certainly did. I'm just afraid they're going to find out they can fly without me. Oh, I'm going to land off this business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can take the car and pick up a map and then good luck. Good. It's a shame about you being grounded, Marcy. Well, mm. that's what I get for taking an interest in a small child. You should get a look at that small child. Hmm? Oh, well, that's not what you think at all. He's some kind of a scientist. He communes with time and space and things. So it's just like a cousin of mine from South Carolina. They finally put him away. What does he look like? Oh, he's a cute little old kitty. Quiet, Alice. Oh, I don't know. He's, uh, he's tall. He has long hair. Well, looks like your scientist also communes with spirits. Excuse me. Don't stare. Hello. 
Hello. If you don't recognize me, it's because I'm out of uniform. You're out of uniform? Oh, of course. You're a uh, Poochie's friend. Oh, let's not go into that. I want to talk to you. Must be this apron. As soon as I put it on, everybody wants to talk to me. What are you, a fine bartender? Oh, that? No. I flew to Chicago to attend a research conference. Do bartenders have research conferences? Oh, no. The university sent me back. I do this because, contrary to public opinion, graduate research students have to eat. That's what I am, graduate research student. I see. I'm awfully glad. Why? Just confirmed the feeling I had about you. What kind of a feeling? Oh, just a feeling. I'll be seeing you. What's that? Old Oak Road, Old Oak Lane. You seem to have misplaced Sunset Boulevard. What does it say on the map? And it says we're lost. Well, let me see. And you'll have to drop everything and leave for London by tomorrow. Tell them I'm airmailing a whole new advertising campaign. I want you to report to me as soon as you've met with Henley. This new campaign of yours is great. They're going to love it. I hope so. Well, you better get going. What is this, Old Oak? Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Good. Mm, now, let me see. I have to left that turn. Okay. Nice. Battery's dead. Oh. I don't know where I'm staying yet. I'll cable you as soon as I get there. Okay, have a good trip, Otto. Thanks, Mike. second, push your clutch in and let it out and we start to roll, okay? Okay. Well, can't you push any harder? But I'm sorry, I never eat. Excuse me. Oh, now look, honey. Well, what do you say, baby? I got some pretty good connections in old Shy. Instead of sitting in that little old hotel room looking at those little old walls, you and me could be having lots of fun. Excuse me. Oh, no, wait a minute. Don't bother with that character. Look at it. Here's the key to my suite. I'll expect you around seven. You'll have a little drinky. Hang on the old feed bag, and you and I'll go on the turn. How does that sound, huh? Oh, boy. How about that little celebration? All right, you win. Seven o'clock. My name is Mike Tracy. Mike? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm 
Marcy, look. Yeah, hello, Marcy. I say, look. Uh, if you didn't like haven't we met before, you're really going to hate this, but it happens to be true. I have to take an important client and his wife to dinner tonight. My date is at home with the virus. No, really, honest, uh, would you uh, like to join us? You could help me to spend that dollar you gave me. <laughs> oh, well, I'd believe you, but uh, I'm sorry, I just can't. Well, that's too bad. Maybe some other time. All right, and thanks again for the push. Bye. Hiya, Jack. Hi, Marcy. I missed your last two others. I don't know you why, must right? You Roger. Oh, you must be Marcy. I knew it was you because it's Chicago. In California, it's Bill. Bill who? Marcy, what are you talking about? Or is it Tony? I don't know. Bill, Tony? What is it? What's, what's going on, saying? Jan? Oh, well, I've checked this out, so I'll be seeing Oh, you're not going to leave now. Oh, yes, I have have dates standing right over there. So you kids uh, have fun. Just wait till I get you alone. Jan, I want to talk to you. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's fine. Here we go. Thank you very much. Mr. Tracy, hmm? I found out that I haven't anything to do tonight. Oh? Would you mind dropping me by the public library? I'd love to. <laughs> Seven minutes late. Clock watcher, I'd like to present Miss Lewis, Mrs. Bellamy, Mr. Bellamy. How do you do, Mr. Bellamy? I'm afraid it's my fault. I had to get out of my uniform. Wait. Oh. What branch are you in? Uh, Miss Lewis is an airline stewardess. Oh? I had an out of the Navy. I've ordered champagne cocktails. I Good. hope you like them. Yes, I do. Well, here's to Mr. Bellamy's gardenia soap, which brings us all together on this pleasant occasion. Oh, no, I think we ought to uh, make a toast to Michael's lovely young lady. Thank you. Do you like being an airline hostess, dear? Oh, yes, I love it. I can't remember seeing you or Mr. Bellamy on any of my flights. Well, you young ones can have the airplanes. I'll stick to the ground. But I thought you were so interested in selling soap. What's that got to do with it? Well, does our airline use your soap? Oh, I don't know. But you should know. You're letting a big customer get away. That's very true, my dear. But right now, selling one customer isn't our problem. We need to map out a whole new campaign. One that's just as effective as the last one. Mr. Bellamy, I think I have it. Yeah? Has everything. Color, appeal, educational value. Yeah, go on. Well, we run a series of ads going back to the origins of soap. Show how they made soap in the old days. We could use posters of the pioneers. Contrast these posters with the modern gardenia soap plant. I like that. That stinks. If I want to educate people, I'll build a college. All right, I'll find another approach. Well, I have an idea. I have a better one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry we got involved in business. Oh, I didn't mind. Mr. Bellamy likes you, I can tell. <laughs> it's one thing about old Bellamy. He's got a tough exterior, but inside he has a heart of rock. He was a little rough on your idea. You know, I have an idea. It's so have I, and it has nothing to do with gardenia soap. <laughs> Oh, you're a wonderful dancer. You make me look good. That's the way girls should talk. The art of flattering men seems to be lost. Women can't seem to lie the way they used to. Oh, we do all right. You know, I really think I know what would appeal to Mr. Bellamy. Oh, honey, honey, let the office is closed. Oh. Look, if you're so eager to sell gardenia soap, why don't you write him a letter? I'm sorry. That's the girl I've adored all these years. See, if two people really love each other, these little spats can be patched up. Yes, Mike. <sighs> I'm awfully glad the battery in your car ran down. We should celebrate every anniversary in a garage. Uh, where would you like to go from here? Oh, I don't care any place you like. Maybe we should get home to the children? Oh, I think the governess could take care of them all. Oh. <laughs> How many do we have? Six. Frankie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hate to leave you alone with all this stuff. The other kids flying too. I don't see how you can handle it. Well, at least they'll have time to load their things in the car before they leave. Yeah, what's the trunk to get? You know, old Mother Necessity will find a way. Look, you better get out of here before your passengers have to serve themselves. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow and you come. Okay. Oh, and Marcy, that's my best suit. Don't put it on the floor of the car. All right, all right. You know me. I don't make it. Yes, I do.
morning. Good morning. You're new, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess you'd be wanting milk. Well, not right now. Would you do something for me? Sure, what? See the box up front? Yeah. Would you mind taking it out? No trouble at all. It's heavy. I'll watch it. Good morning. Moving in? Good morning, yes. I bid you bakery. Oh. Pleasure, lady. Thank you. Hi, Mike. I'm late. I went down the wrong street. Oh, so you're an angel to come over and help. I think we can manage. No neon sign. <laughs> Hello. Hey, that's quite a mansion you've got there. Well, Mike, what are you doing here? I just moved from Boston, ran into jail at the airport. She told me you were having trouble, so here I am. Trouble with Shooter Tracy, they call me. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Tracy. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> well, what's the problem? Well. Simple logistics. We move these from here to there. For you. Uh, <laughs> careful with that one. It's got glass in it. Yeah, okay. Hey, got any room for a go dump? Mike! When did you get in? I get past with the mercury rush. That's wonderful. Hey, what are you, a one-woman moving company? Well, not exactly. Gee, you look good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, with Captain Jameson on the job, your trouble's over, ma'am. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, not at all. Tomorrow the milk will be on the house. Thank I'll you. I'll leave a cake for you when I come by in the morning. Thanks a lot. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Tracy, Captain Jameson. All right, how do you do? Listen, Mike. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we better go inside. They're canning everything these days. Peterson family dinner. Everything from soup to dessert. A friend of mine cans those. Really? Mm -hmm. Speaking of eating, Marcy, I have the evening off. I thought maybe if you weren't oh, busy I'd tonight. Oh, I'd love to, Mike. I would. Wait a minute, I'll be right back. It's been Tom Cat again. I told you we'd have to get rid of him. <laughs> what will the children say? Hey, do you really want six kids? Yes. Miss Lewis, in many ways, you're a very remarkable girl. Why don't we talk about it at dinner time? Marcy! Oh, you better go back to breaking dishes. Yeah? Well, I got the curtains up, but I've got a couple pieces left over. They're kind of little. Oh, well, those are the tie backs. Here, I'll do that myself. Come on now, Skipper. Oh, thanks. Now the tooth begin to get me anyway. Tie back, huh? Huh? Well, I don't know much about that. There's a lot that I do know that I want to talk to you about at dinner tonight. Can I rest for a minute, Mommy? Why, sure. Mommy? Oh, yes, we have to. Marcy? Yeah, Mike? What else goes in the kitchen? Well, there's one more carton, and I know just where it is. Oh, Mike? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. This will never do, will it? Uh-uh. Well, um, you'll be Mike, uh, Mickey, and Michael. Mike, Mickey, and Michael. How's that? Why can't he be Mickey? Because I'm Michael. It couldn't be. Uh -huh. I'm on 24-hour reserve. That must be the airport. They're the only ones that know the number. Hello? Yes, this is she. Oh, yes. All right, I'll be right out. Thank you. To fly to Dallas in 40 minutes. I'll run you Well, I have a car outside, thank you. Now, let me see. Flight bag. What do I do with my uniform? Oh, talk to one another, will you, please? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mike! Yeah, yeah. I'm Mike. Would you please unhitch the trailer for me? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll be running along. So wonderful. Gee, I'm really going to have to go in the back door with this uniform on. I'll be grounded for good. Thanks a lot, fellas. Goodbye. So long. Keep your flaps up. Nice singing. Yeah, likewise. Oh. I'm 
Mike. Oh, Mike, this is wonderful. Did you do all this while I was... Dallas. Well, the flight was canceled because of fog. Oh, no. I uh, haven't eaten yet, if you'd still like to have dinner. I don't think so. Where are you going? Look, this interior decorating is just a hobby with me. I'm a scientist. Well, I know you're a scientist, but what's the matter? Well, let's examine it scientifically, huh? All right. Premise. You needed some help. Yes. Argument. You got it. Well, I appreciate it. That phone it. call from the airport was very convenient. Kept things from getting too complicated. The coast clears, and you're back with some convenient fog. Oh, my. Conclusion? I think I'll stick to my test tubes. But... bacteria. It's called bioluminescence. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. Would you mind explaining it to me? <sighs> well, I wouldn't mind, Marcy, but I don't think you'd understand it. Now, don't be a smug male. Tell me. Very well. What I'm doing is an experiment with intensity, which varies in proportion to the velocity of reaction of the oxidative enzyme luciferos, accompanied by luciferin, which is a substrate. Well, I warned you. I must admit something. <laughs> All right, let me explain it another way. Bioluminescence is a cold light. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, Dr. Hardy, come in. May I present Marcy Lewis? Dr. Hardy. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? I feel as though I know you. We used your books in my science classes. That's a dirty trick to play on the young. Science became my favorite subject. Oh, you've got a pretty fine instructor right here. He was the guest lecturer at the research conference in Chicago. But he didn't tell me. I suppose you didn't tell her about the Bricker Fellowship, either. Oh, I don't think Miss Lewis would be interested in that. Yeah, but I am. Of really? course she is. The Bricker Fellowship is awarded only once a year to an outstanding scientist. It's based on achievement and character. And this year, Mike is one of the nominees. Well, that's a great honor. Oh, it's very flattering, I think, too. I if I win, it means a teaching job here. And I go on with my experiments. I hope you do. I do, too. Do you think you will, Doctor? I'm not allowed to say I'm on the selection committee. Oh, would you like to hear my relativity joke? Oh, Doctor. Yes, All right. <laughs> Ask me to explain the theory of relativity. All right. Will you explain the theory of relativity? Well, when you're sitting in a dentist chair for five minutes, it seems like five years. But when you're holding a pretty girl in your lap for five minutes, it seems like five seconds. I see. Oh, when Einstein tells it, he gets belly laughs. <laughs> he never gives up with <laughs> that story. Well, someday you'll you see. You bet. Someday it'll be one of those school traditions. Talk about Dr. Hardy's relativity, Joe. <laughs> you love all of this, don't you, Mike? You mean the lab? Mm, the lab, the campus, your work. It shows in your face. It does? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just a teacher at heart. Oh, that's wonderful. No, you're being polite. No, I'm not. You mention the word teacher to anybody, and right away they think of a little underpaid, absent-minded Mr. Chip's character wearing an alpaca jacket and surrounded by dusty books. They don't understand. But teaching is just about as close to immortality as you can come. You know, in every class that you teach, someone will remember something you say. And because of it, his life will be changed a little. And he'll change someone else's life. And in that way, you become projected into the future. I'm lecturing. And you're not even registered. I'm registered, Mike. My mother was a teacher. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You'd like mother. Oh, I'm sure I would. You're not at all like I thought you'd be. I'm not? Uh-uh, not at all. I was brought up in a little college town. Really? Mm -hmm. I love this life. Some people think it's sheltered and unimportant. Oh, no. It's terribly important. I think so. And very too. exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike, oh. I'm so glad we met. So am I. 
Oh, if you don't mind, Doctor. Oh, I guess he doesn't. <laughs> your date last night? Oh, we had fun. He's a very remarkable young man. What'd you do? You want some coffee? Mm-hmm. What'd you do last night? Learned about bioluminescence. Oh. Okay. okay. You want some coffee, Jan? Mm-hmm. Please. No? Oh, yeah. That's Mike. to be in trouble again. What did you... He didn't say, but I did it. Hmm. Well, oh, take this upstairs. I'm worrying myself to death on time. You know, maybe she shouldn't have worried Alice, about this your breakfast. Yes. I can't eat. Miss Dawson, Mr. Tracy. Oh, my oh. baby. Tanner, how do you do? Good. How do you do? Mr. Parker, our photographer, Mr. Hamilton, head of our art department. How do you do? Hi, gentlemen, this is our little Marcy. Won't you sit mm. right down over here? We've you. certainly got the hands to you, Miss Lewis. You do? It's all right, Marcy. We know all about it. We've heard from Bellamy. Well, how is he? He's fine. Like a kid, full of enthusiasm. He's got the greatest advertising campaign in the history of his company lined up. Well, that's wonderful, Mike. Is it yours? No, yours. Mine? Didn't you write him a letter giving him an idea for gardenia soap? Oh, yes. Remember that night we were dancing in Chicago? You told me to write him a note? Uh-huh. Well, I did. You did? Mm hmm Did he like it? He's insane about it. And I use the word insane advisedly. He's talking bonuses. Honey, I spent 30 minutes on the phone this morning listening to him rave about this idea, and I don't even know what it's about. Well, it's a wonderful idea. It is. Uh, Miss Lewis, could you be a little bit more specific? Well, of course. That would be nice. Well, the idea is this. You've seen pictures of actresses, socialites, and athletes endorsing different things, and I was thinking, why not airline stewardesses? I know people are interested in us because they're always asking me about our work, and if you use pictures of airline stewardesses all over the world, it would tie in with the idea that gardenia soap is the same under all conditions. You like it? Like it? Like it? Honey, I think it's great. It's just great. That's fine. Uh, Osgood, I want you to get an exclusive tie-up with the airline. We're going to use 24 sheets all over the country. Right. Hamelin, give me a layout for a series of radio commercials. Use the marriage angle. The airline stewardesses have gotten married. Oh, but they don't fly after they're married. They strike the marriage angle. We'll keep them single. CJ, don't let's forget to call Bellamy. Yes, good idea. Parker, I want you to use a different stewardess for every layout. We'll make her the gardenia girl of the month. Get your girls to start shooting art. We can use backgrounds all over the world, but wherever they are, they're using gardenia soap. Got it? Got it. One thing. Yeah? Who's going to be our first gardenia girl? <laughs> all right now, Marcy. Hold it. Good. One second now, Marcy. Got it. Hold it. Ah, that's good. Now let's have one for the road, huh? You can relax a second. Oh, I'm comfortable. Come in. Hi, right, kids. How's it going? Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Just finish. There you go. Got it? All right. No, this is fun. Well, this should make it even more fun. Mike, all of that for me? All for you. Say, uh, how about having dinner with me tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to take a flight out. Uh -oh. Ooh, and I better get my clothes changed. All right, I'll see you as soon as you get back. You and I are due for a long talk. Uh, American Airlines Flight 455 following Douglas Express weather. American Flight 455, this is Douglas Radio, Tucson, thunderstorm overhead moving east. Douglas overcast, visibility five miles. American Airlines Flight 455 out. We're sitting down at Douglas. Two sugars, that's your... 
You can't do that. I've got a dinner date in Los Angeles. <laughs> no, ain't that too bad. Better get your passengers ready. And don't give him any. <laughs> Passengers are all taken care of. The bus just took them into town. I just checked with the hotel. They got room enough for them, but that's all. I'm afraid the crew will have to sleep here. I got a cot back there that you're welcome to use with. Well, thanks anyway. I'll stick with the troops. Uh, you mean tell me that's the only hotel around here? Well, there's the Adobe Inn, but that's no good. They're closed for the season. Uh, Wait a minute. Old Hawkins is still there. Oh, I forgot. Phone shut off. Did you want to take a chance with a cot outside? What do you say? Fine with me. Well, let's pick up Benson. We'll go around and take a look at it. Right. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> We're sorry to intrude on you like this, but uh, our plane ran into a little weather. Well, the hotel is officially closed up, but uh, I guess I can accommodate you. You folks uh, want to look? Uh, two rooms. Well, shouldn't be any trouble. <laughs> you have 50 women to choose from. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Flyers, eh? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to dig you up some fresh linen. Oh, uh, could we get something to eat? Oh, oh I don't know. Uh, I won't even eat my own cooking, and I ain't very particular. Have you got any food? Oh, sure, lady. We got food. Well, if you show me the kitchen, I'll fix you something. Oh, I, I love to eat. Hey. <laughs> Come out this way. She cooks. Wow. Coffee, Benson? Mm, I've had it. My compliments to the chef. Mm. Thank you. I better check on the weather. That's a good idea. Can I get you anything, Mr. Hawkins? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I couldn't eat another bite. See ya. You know, that's the best meal I've had since the hotel closed up. Now, now you leave everything right here, and I'll, I'll clean it up in the morning. I, uh, I better go get started on your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice old guy. Yeah. <laughs> There are only two pancakes left. Surely you can eat them. Oh, right? no, no, no. Gosh, I thought cooking like this was a lost art. <laughs> I love to cook. Ah, this is nice. You realize we've never really had a chance to talk alone before. I know. I can remember the time when you weren't very anxious to talk to me. <laughs> remember the first day when I give you a lift? When I forgot the lunch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure out why you didn't let him fire me. Well, oh, something you said in the car. Something I said? Mm hmm, that first day. About pilots being chauffeurs? Oh, no, no. No, oh, about not really being alive unless you're in the air. Oh. I felt that way ever since I was a kid. How long have you been flying, Mike? Mm hmm. So I took my first flying lesson. I was about 15. Really? Mm hmm. An old crate with wings. <laughs> my old man found out about it and wailed the tar out of me, but it was too late. <laughs> Why? Well, I got hung up on a cloud. I ran away from home and joined an air circus, barnstormed all over the country. I had my own airline for a while. You didn't? Yeah. It consisted of one airplane and two engines. <laughs> <laughs> then the war came along and I joined up. You know, most people get tired of traveling around. But traveling affects me like, well, like some people are affected by money. The more I get, the more I want. I know. Sure you do. But a lot of people don't. You know, you and I are alike, Marcy. We both come from small towns where people live and die and never travel any farther than the corner barbershop. That can never satisfy me. People at home don't seem to understand me. They seem to think I'm running away from something. Oh, I don't think you're running away from anything, Mike. I think you're running to something. Hey, that's it. Exactly. You know, Marcy, this is a great big world we live in, filled with many languages. And I want to hear all of them before I die. I want to meet as many people as I can and find out what makes them tick, what they talk about and what they think about. I don't want to miss anything. That's the way I feel, Mike.
from the office to see you. Who? Only C.R. Test, president of the airline. C.R.? Now what did I do? Well, thanks, Joe. To attention, por favor. On American World Airways, anuncia la llegada del vuelo 584, presidente de México, Centro y Sur América. Un pasaje lo saldrá con la Have you seen him? Yes, yeah, fine. Come in. Hi. Hello, Marcy. Hello, Mike. Mike. Uh, this is C.R. Smith, your boss, Marcy Lewis. Hello. How do you do? Miss Lewis, I'd like you to explain why I pay a high-priced public relations department to do a job that you've knocked off in your spare time. This campaign of yours is great. Sensational, I think is the word. That's the word, all right. You like it? It's crazy about it. It's the biggest thing that's happened to us since the reversible propeller. Here, Marcy, <laughs> wait till you get a look at these pictures. That's just wonderful. Quickly, put up one shot. Who's you okay, the brute? Oh, Marcy, these are wonderful. Look what I had to work with. <laughs> 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 I've arranged for you to get a nice bonus. Bonus? Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Now, how would you like to spend some of that bonus on a fellow who hasn't got a thing to do tonight? I'd like it. You're all welcome to join us, of course. I'd love to. Oh, I forgot. I've got another appointment. Isn't that too bad? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. We'll see you all later. Come on. Marcy, will you tell me something? What? What are you doing in the stewardess? I like it, Mike. Yeah, sure, it's great. But not for the rest of his life. I hadn't planned on being the oldest stewardess in the world. You are a most surprising girl. Has anybody ever remembered to tell you that? <laughs> you don't fall into any of these. Ordinary layout patterns. You're wonderful to look at. In advertising, that's empty. Most read, that's having you in sight. Most remembered, that's not having you in sight and wanting to. Marcy, you know, I think you'd like the kind of a life I live. It's almost like another world. The constant excitement of seeing your ideas come alive and start all kinds of wheels moving all over the earth. You get an idea today and tomorrow it influences millions of people you'll never even see. People in South America, Bombay, England. There's nothing to match it, Marcy. You make it sound so wonderful, Mike. More wine? Should I know? Didn't you tell your photographer to call her to work tonight? 
Parker? Did he call her? Yeah. He said he needed an extra picture tonight to send east. I'll bet he did. Don't you trust him? I wouldn't trust him with Whistler's mother. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? No. No? No. You're a very unusual girl, Marcy. Look, Mac, if you're in a romantic mood, go to the movies. I've got a house full of people waiting for me. Now, where do you want me? I, uh... I've known a lot of girls in my day, Marcy, but when I... Are say... you sure you asked me down here to take pictures? Well, now, why don't you sit down here and relax? I've got a couple the lights out. The doorbell. About one second, I'll There's somebody at the door, Matt. Take it easy, take it easy. Yeah. What's the matter, buddy? Marcy! Come on, get your clothes on. Get you out of here. This is cold, but what do you expect? Are you just about that? You're one of the primitives. Marcy, what are you doing? I'm taking pictures. Do you think everything will be here? You're responsible for all this. What do you, Marcy, wouldn't be? You're going to remedy that right now. Come on, Marcy, I'm taking you home. Who do you think you're going to look, I don't want to fight. I'll bet you do. Take it easy. Why should I? Fellas, stop it! You stop it! Because I did a little boxing at college. Come on, get on your feet. I'm taking you home. Oh, you are, huh? Oh. Don't take this opportunity away from me. It wasn't his fault. He had no idea this was happening. It isn't fair for you to take your child away from life because of this. He's impulsive. That's what makes him impulsive. If it weren't for that, he wouldn't get ideas like the Gardenia Girl campaign, which is still great advertising. I know. Tell you how lucky you are to have a man like Mike working for you. Look at his record. You can't dismiss that. that flying is the most important thing in his life. If he weren't adventurous and courageous, he, he just wouldn't be Captain Mike Jameson. He should be interested in flying a bit of this before you came along, Marcy. Am I just thinking? I know. I issued the order myself. It's none of my business, but uh, what do you do with the Absalom? Who's 
searching for the garden wall. Well, and then the fight started, and I had to... Yes, I realize. If you could find something a little less colorful to wear, like our regulation uniform, you and Mike can go back to uh, cloud hopping. What do you mean by cloud hopping? Well, that's up to Mike. Oh, gee, she and Mike are getting along very well on the ground. No, that's not what she needs. She needs a guy like Mike, who's creative and pulsive. She told us all herself. Mr. Bellamy, you just heard. That's where your excitement is, the same as mine. Besides, the biggest kid in this party. Marcy! Yes, Mike? 